Episode 48. Here's the reality. We've always done more with less. Yes. That's just a fact of the matter. Yes, yes. And so from the little that we've had, we've created great things. And so I think let's not worry about what we don't have. Let's use this, these little things that we do have and let's grow it. That's what we've done in the past when we didn't have anything but morsels. <laughs> and we made big industries out of those little things. Wow. And so let's think about, hey, how did we get, how did we get where we are now? We didn't have a whole lot then, and look what we've built. And we can build even greater because we know how to stretch. <laughs> <laughs> we've always known how to stretch. Now, that doesn't say let's not compete for these larger countries, but you got to start somewhere. And the thing that holds you back more often than not is worrying about what you don't have. Welcome to the GovCon Giants podcast, federal contracting for people on the outside looking in. If you are here to learn how to win a piece of the pie without getting your face smashed in, then you've tuned in to the right place. Now, the giant that not only walks the walk, but talks the talk, your host, Eric Coffey. Dr. Joseph Grant was employed with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and Space Technology Mission Directorate. He formerly served as the Deputy Program Executive in the Small Business Innovation Research, Small Business Technology Transfer Programs, Dr. Grant has worked with NASA for the last 20 years and has held various positions before going to NASA headquarters to work with the SBIR program. Dr. Grant has more than 15 years of research and development experience in areas of optics and photonics. Dr. Grant earned his PhD from Alabama A&M University and applied physics. In today's interview, we go beyond the SBIR, STTR program rules and requirements. We go on to discuss things like the do's, don'ts, mistakes, and habits of successful SBR winners. Dr. Grant and I talk about the vast opportunity for small businesses and universities to fund high-risk projects and perform important research utilizing these vehicles. During his tenure at NASA, Dr. Grant spent many years attempting to recruit minority participation into these programs, a story which he shares on today's episode, and also the formation and how it came about of starting the NASA Roadshow. All right, I'd like to welcome today's guest, Dr. Joseph Grant former Deputy Program Executive of SBIR, STTR of NASA. Welcome, Dr. Grant. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you, sir, for agreeing to participate. I know that uh, you recently retired. Yes, I did, and happy, happily retired. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. How long uh, did you work at NASA? I worked NASA for 28, 28 years, and I worked DOD for about eight years. Wow. Wow. Okay. Was that uh, consecutive with NASA or was it uh, in between the DOD? DOD was first. Okay. I started out my career with DOD and started and moved from DOD over to NASA. Okay. 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 Now, um, during at some point during your career, I know that you were a physicist doing research. When did that happen? At what point was that in your career? Well, I became a physicist in the early parts of 2000. I started out in a different field as an electronics uh, instructor for the Department of Defense and decided I wanted to do something different. And I decided to go into physics. It seemed to be closer to what I was doing as far as the electronics part. So in physics, there was a whole lot more that I could do. Landed in the area of optics. And uh, that, like I said, it's, was an interesting uh, connection, but I absolutely loved doing the research I did mostly in, in the area of optics, optics and physics. Okay, okay. And um, so at what point during this process of you doing the research, did you learn about the SBIRs? Oh, my. Uh, pretty much early on, I knew about SBIRs because I, as a researcher in, and a technical person within NASA, I worked at Marshall Space Flight Center back then, all of the researchers and technical people were tasked with reviewing all of the SBIR proposals and STTR, Small Business Innovation Research and Small Business Technology Transfer, 
that came in to NASA. So we, as researchers, were the front line in saying whether a proposal was technically sound or that the information uh, put in that proposal is actually something that we need to deal with or and does it make sense right right okay and so that's where i started i really <laughs> didn't really want to do it <laughs> starting out i i was busy with my research and was mostly interested in trying to get my research done but that was a part of other duties as assigned within nasa and so we all had to do it uh, but that was when i initially started it i think it was in in the late 90s okay when I started okay and then proposals okay so now you you were already reviewing the proposals but before we uh, go dive deep dive into the sbr and sttr programs i pulled some information off one of your old presentations mm -hmm. and it said that the sttr seeks to bridge the gap between basic science and commercialization of resulting innovations is that a fair description that is an accurate description. Okay, okay. And then I pulled down some of the goals of SBIR and STTR that you have listed here. And so one of the goals it says uh, is to stimulate technological innovation, meet federal research and development needs, foster and encourage participation in innovation and entrepreneurship by socially and economically disadvantaged persons, increase private sector commercialization of innovations derived from federal research and development R&D funding, and to foster technology transfer through cooperative R&D between small business and research institutions. That is, those goals are still the same. It's okay. across the, uh, the 11 agencies who do SBIR and STTR. And STTR. Okay. Uh, so the 11 agencies that do it are I know this is NASA, but uh, what are some of the examples of other agencies that do SBR and STTR? Uh, can you repeat that again? I said, I know that we're talking about NASA, but what are some of the other agencies that do it? You said there's 11? Oh, yes. There, uh, there are, all, <laughs> yes. There is Air Force, uh, Army, uh, Navy, all of which under the DOD uh, umbrella offer an SBIR and or an STTR program. Um, you have the Department of Energy, you have the Department of Transportation, you also have NOAA at some points actually also offer an SBIR. Program. Wow. Okay. Department of Agriculture offers an SBIR program. It's all on the website, but all 11 agencies offer an SBIR program and those who do research, uh, extramural research, who having a budget of at least a uh, hundred million dollars are required by law to offer an SBIR program. Mm. So anyone doing extramural research that have having a budget of at least a hundred million dollars or more, they have to offer it. Wow. On the STTR, it's quite different. They have increased the amount that, uh, the threshold for where a agency has to come in, and that is a billion dollars in <laughs> your research. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, all right, so in order to, so SBIRs are more commonplace than STTRs. Well, SBIR is, has a lower threshold for those agencies who are mandated to offer it, mm. that's more accurate. The threshold for, for the mandate is lower for SBIR than it is for STT. Would that make them more prevalent? Most likely. <laughs> I mean, is that a fair assumption? <laughs> <laughs> well, since th that being said, having more, uh, more of the agencies actually offering the SBIR than the STTR, actually only five agencies meet the threshold for STTR. Wow, wow, okay. That doesn't stop them from doing it on their own. <laughs> okay. But, um, the mandate, the threshold is that you have to be doing uh, research at least a billion. 
Gotcha. 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 Okay. Now, before uh, we start the call, you were telling us about some of the, what you were, you were doing some research as a physicist, and then um, you said some areas that you, you stumbled or you didn't quite, couldn't quite take it over the, the lines. Can you tell us about that experience? As a researcher, it is, it was very important to me to be able to get the, to create this widget, to create a technology that I thought based on my research could be used to, let's just say, change the world. All of us think that we can change the world <laughs> with uh, our new product that we just developed. However, the person that we're trying to get it to don't always see it the same way. Uh, as a technologist or as a researcher, we love the product that we develop and think that it can do everything that we said it can and probably can. But a problem there is being able to convince the program manager or the buyer of the worth of that particular uh, technology that you develop. And I had quite a, <laughs> uh, a time trying to convince the program since I worked at NASA as a researcher, I had quite a time trying to convince them that my product, my technology would save them time, money, and, and effort if they would use it. And typically, they will brush you off because they're used to the technology that they have. Mm. Most of them, is not to say that they don't want anything new, it's that they are convinced that what they have is doing the job. And so you've got to do a much better job in actually showing them how what you're bringing, your development is going to uh, do better than what they already have. How is it, at least by a factor. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, right. it's a risk that they're going to be taking that if it's not going to really change the world or change what I'm doing, most important for a, a government person, especially like NASA, schedule is important. Right. Budget is important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if they can get, if it comes, if it changes, if they can do it with the budget that they have and reduce the amount of budget needed to uh, do the job they have to do, that's a plus. And if it reduces the schedule time and mo oh, most importantly, if you're dealing with massive risk, right, if it reduces right. my risk, that's important. Being able to take those three things and sell it to the program manager saying that this technology I have can do these three things. It can help you reduce your budget. It comes in under budget. It can reduce your uh, risk. And it can also uh, help you with your schedule. So if I can convince them of that, I had to learn that. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> these are things that they care about. They care about the technology, of course. However, these things are most important to them. They got a timeline. Right, right. And they've got to be able to meet that timeline and they only have a limited amount of budget. And if you are proposing something that's right up against their budget, they're not going to take it. It's un unlikely they're going to take it unless those are the two things are really, really uh, are reduced significantly. Right, right. So, so if you had two out of the three, they, they better be, to a, like you said, to a uh, multiple a It factor. should be significant. <laughs> <laughs> and so trying to figure it out, sometimes it, you're at their mercy and say, you know, you just kind of have to talk and talk and plead until finally, because if you can't get those things, most of the time they're not going to pay as much attention because, of course, you understand they have, they have a job they have to do and they have to get it out on time and on schedule and on your budget. So it's the case with outside of NASA because we, the whole pro purpose of this SBR program is to try to commercialize a product that they have. And so as a technologist, you want to be able to sell or market that product to someone out there looking to buy it. Forgetting the fact that you know it's the best thing since sliced bread, you got to convince him, the buyer, that is the best thing since sliced bread. And honestly, 
he's not really as much interested in the deep technology or technological advances that it has. He's more <laughs> interested in what is it going to do for me and how am I going to benefit from it? How is it going to increase my bottom dollar? That's right. That's right. And so instead of telling them how great your technology is or your product is, spend a little bit of time telling them what it is and spend much more time telling them how, is, how it would benefit him. That is the most important thing that we as technologists, and I am talking from that side as researcher and technologist physicists, that's the part we miss. And unfortunately, that's not something that we're taught either. Sure, sure. Certainly, certainly. So um, would you say it's difficult, extremely difficult for someone to try and do this on their own, to take that and move it to the next phase? It's, it can be done. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not easy, right. especially if you are not prone to selling or marketing. If okay. you don't have any kind of marketing background or don't think from the business perspective and you're only thinking from the technology perspective, it's going to be a pretty difficult sale. Right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, a couple of things that I was reviewing in that same presentation, um, and then I've also seen online, the SBIR is a loan? Absolutely not. There you go. It is not a loan. In some, in some agencies, it is a grant. In other agencies, it is a, offered as a contract. Okay. But um, there two, those are the two mechanisms under which SBIR are, are, are offered. And uh, it depends on the agency and their buying program that determines whether they offer it as a contract or whether they offer it as a grant. Okay. And then uh, in terms of intellectual property rights, where, how does that stand with small businesses? Under the intellectual property rights, actually you have the, that's your property. Okay. And uh, you have the right to hold on to it. You have to elect it though, because the government is paying for it. But And as a small business, you have to decide that I am electing rights to my intellectual property and therefore you can't have it and nor can you sell it, but you have to elect those rights. Okay. Okay. That's not including the data, uh, data rights are, which is something a little bit different, but the, your data uh, is usually protected for, or it used to be protected for four years. Right. But now they've they they changed the rules, and now you had before you had to come back or get another project, and that extended the data rights for as long as you were working on that project with the government. Now they are have are changing the right rules to at least twenty years that data is protected. Wow, that's significant. That is significant. This is new. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is this is a new uh, rule or regulation that they've been they're working on getting it out there now. So that that most companies should be quite happy about that. But you know that's way that's that's um, that stops some companies from wanting to work with the government is the fact that you know they don't have access to their data now understand this one thing when you do get the data rights and you do elect your intellectual property as well un the government did pay for this so they do have rights to use it not to sell it okay okay that's a difference <laughs> right no that's a that's a big difference mm -hmm. right. they can use it but they can't go and get another contractor or like one of their prime contractors right and, and have them to produce what you just uh, made for them, not without your permission. Okay. Okay. No, and I, that, no, because that's, that's what, as a small business, that's something that I would, that'd be the first thing I think they're going to take my information and give it to this big guy so he can use it. Not legally. They, they can't do it legally. There may be some a roundabout way, but you have rights. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Now, 
so you advanced up to the position of deputy program executive. Mm -hmm. uh, how, like, how did you tell me about the, the progression of your career up to that role? Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> As the re I did the research probably about 15, 20 years, and I was offered an opportunity to go to NASA's headquarters to uh, work on this new technology development uh, 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 what division that they were creating. That was back in 2000, 2010. They created a new division in NASA and it was specifically gonna deal with technology. Under that office of, of the chief technology, the SBIR was brought. And under SB, once I got there and viewed all of the different programs that were available under the SMUTs, when I say STMD or Office of Chief Technology, that's the new program that was created in NASA under the Obama, Obama administration. Okay. Spent more time trying to figure out what technologies were needed to advance uh, space travel or space uh, exploration. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, when I got there, I took that uh, detail assignment back in 2010 just to kind of see what the new office was going to do. And I ran upon again, SBIR. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I had started early on reviewing proposals and uh, rating proposals, I had the opportunity coming to NASA's headquarters to decide if I wanted to actually work at that level in the program and deciding what technologies would be chosen uh, to go out on a solicitation to say, these are the technologies that NASA needs to advance either exploration or travel or propulsion or all of those things that fall under that umbrella. And I kind of reluctantly took it as a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I still wanted to do research. I'm a researcher at heart, but at headquarters is not a research place. You don't do research at headquarters. No. <laughs> <laughs> you uh -huh. run programs. Right, yeah. <laughs> You manage right. programs and yes. you provide funding for those programs to actually do the work. And so I did and then thought about it, you know, as I was making that decision, thought about the, all of the things that I did trying to get my technology into a program. And I said, this is probably a better way of helping NASA or some of the program managers understand the technology that that's coming to them and to have them look at it a little differently and knowing that these researchers and technologists don't really know how to sell it. And so I could be much more of an advocate for the technology at the top level than mm -hmm. I was pushing from the bottom. So now instead of pushing from the bottom, I can be pulling, pulling from, the, from top. the top. That's right. It's, <laughs> and no, no, so I can see that, that in my head clearly. That, that kind of sold it for me. I said, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I could do a little bit more, be much more of an advocate. And that's what I've done over the years, being more of an advocate for those technologies rather than just pushing. And, and I can see that, um, especially like you said, um, if they've never tried to sell a technology they don't know what the challenge is and uphill battle it, that you faced when you were experiencing that. Absolutely. And, and you knew firsthand. I knew firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, 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 it's quite a, you know, a unique, uh, kind of a unique uh, set of uh, experiences that I brought to the table that not everyone had all of those, all of them had engineering backgrounds, but not all of them worked in as a researcher or as a specific engineer. A lot of them started as project managers, mm. advanced to program managers. So some never really do the actual research right. engineering, but some do. Right, right, right. But 
that that mix of you know experience and program experience kind of helped tremendously, especially where I came in. It helped me tremendously in uh, convincing some of the others to look at this technology. I know it's a nascent type technology, and uh, but I think it would benefit us if we looked at it or tried to, you know, at least advance it a little bit. Nice, nice. Can you? Can you tell me uh, some of the common misconceptions about SBR and STTR programs? We touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, I know that you're, you're sometimes you've been on the road making presentations. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there some common misconceptions that you hear out there that you'd like to dispel? Well, one you mentioned just a minute ago about <laughs> your intellectual property. If I uh, reveal my intellectual property to the government, then they're going to take it and give it to some contractor and, and I am out of luck. Right, that's, right. That's, that's a total misconception. That will never happen. What, let me, most of the time, 99% of the time, that don't, doesn't happen. Okay. You know, that's not the way the program works. Right, 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 right. right. If that ever happens, then you have a recourse to come back and say, this was my technology. And we've had a couple since I've been there who thought maybe that NASA had given their technology over to someone else. And after going through the process, uh, uh, they found out, no, you're right, you didn't do what I thought it was. It just looked pretty simple. But okay. we do give you the audience and the opportunity to come and make the case. Okay. And I say we, I shouldn't say we, I'm no longer with NASA. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're not that far removed. I understand. <laughs> but they, I, I have had the opportunity to let them make that case and, and share, show us why they thought we had taken that technology. And it turned out not to be the case. Okay. Now, so anything else that you can think of? Yes. But the, another thing is that they often said that it's, you know, it's a loan and you have to pay this money back. No, it, it's not a loan. It is actually a, uh, in, 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 for all practical purposes, it is a grant. Okay. For all practical purposes. It's a grant. And so grants, as you well know, you don't have to pay a grant back. Right. It is money, and it's most of the time it's a best effort type of thing. When you get a grant, if you've worked anywhere in, at, in the academic world as a researcher in the university, you note that most of them get grants. And it's usually looked at as a best effort or a study. And if the study turns out that there is nothing new or the idea that I had won't actually work, then that is the answer, we're okay with that. If you know you made your best effort and you couldn't get the product where it was supposed to be, okay, that's fine. That was the best effort that you made and we have an answer that, you know, that may be not the direction that we should go, but that's research. Right. We right. understand what research, uh, but like I said, it is a grant for all practical purposes, although there are different ways it is offered like i said under nasa they are always offered as contracts and it, even though it's offered as a contract under nasa and under a couple of other agencies it's still for all practical purposes somewhat a grant okay it okay. still doesn't have to be repaid right right as right. long as you put in your best effort to try to get done what you proposed in a phase one no one is going to come back after you and say you didn't do what you proposed so i want my money back that's never going to <laughs> never okay. going to happen okay thank you no that's that's no that's that's important to know for people out here because again like you said it would to me it would deter me from even trying right if you said man i gotta pay this money back i don't even want to try this thing no it's never going to happen only thing it would w- would happen is this if you didn't in that first attempt that phase one that you got didn't uh prove the point and to the satisfaction of the agency that it warrants going further then that's just that right stopped at the phase one 
if you did prove your case and they liked what you developed and the study that you gave, because understand, understand this is really a feasibility study. It's a feasibility study, phase one. That's really okay. all it is. And if they like what you said, then I, you get a chance to present it in a, for a phase two, or compete for a phase two. And that's all it is. But if you didn't do well, you're not going to go for a phase two. Right, but you, right. I'm never going to ask for that money back, ever. Right, right. No agency will ask for that money back. Right, right. That's right. research. Right, right. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, actually, what's interesting, I'm looking at um, when you brought up the uh, phase one versus the phase two mm -hmm. on this presentation, uh, it showed the SBIR proposals versus the awards. And that was from like 2010 to 2015. Mm -hmm. But it looks like you ha have a, a fairly high success rate if you submit of being awarded. Um, in 2010, it was 26 percent, and then 2015, it was 26 percent. Yes, you have a. That, that's basically the rate at which uh, NASA awards. It's, okay. It's anywhere between 20 to 30 percent first of phase ones. Okay. And uh, I think going to a phase two, it's anywhere. I think it's about 40 percent. 40 percent go on to a phase two. In the STTR, I know those numbers specifically because I ran that particular program, it was 50 percent typically go on to a phase two. Wow. If a phase, if you got a phase one, usually about 50 percent of them will go on to a phase two. Uh, and what percent were getting phase ones? Uh, what percent were getting phase ones? About uh, about 40 percent 30 to 40 percent of the people who applied under sbir or sttr got about got a phase one That's especially high. under a sb sttr there were higher rates on the sttr because it was a much smaller program <laughs> so, okay <laughs> not so many people submitted that is correct <laughs> so you have a higher rate the num the rate is higher of, of uh, awards well, but see, for me, that data is should be encouraging to the people listening to this because, again, if you have went through and looked at and saw that you can meet the criteria, uh, if you submit, you've got a you know fifty percent chance of getting it. Yes, especially under STTR. Sure, I think that's you know, yeah. That's high. Now, I mean, there was a drawback. What a lot of companies felt in, in working with an STTR is that they had to uh, share the money with a university or uh, research institute. Okay. And typically about 30% of whatever those funds were under phase one, they had to share it with a research institute, typically a university. And um, once they did that and then that trying to get that partnership set up, it was a little bit more uh, uh, work to get that partnership set up because you're dealing with the university and the university have a whole different set of rules. And under NASA, what they did was, what we did under NASA is we gave the universities a lot more time to try to get those uh, approvals through the university and so they we gave them about they had 13 months to get their uh, paperwork together and submit as opposed to some of the other agencies you it was only six months mm. you didn't get it together in six months you couldn't apply you had to get all it done but Here's the thing with what NASA was doing as opposed to some of the other they were actively trying to get new people into the pipeline that is right. universities and new research institutes more specifically minority institutes involved wow. okay. and the whole point of trying to of doing that was to, to target much more minority businesses okay and so i suggested if you're looking for minority business and that's always been the quip for mo most of my colleagues across the agencies. We can't find any of those minority uh, businesses who are doing technology or this type of technology. 
I suggested that they're not looking in the right places. Right. <laughs> I said, well, go to some of the minority uh, institutions. You There you will find a whole lot of those guys who are potential small business owners and small uh, in- entrepreneurs. And so if you would look at it from that point of view, you start to find out where they are. And right. you will you will probably get a lot more. And so hence, it's how we started the NASA Road Tour to try to encourage more of those universities and uh, students to look at uh, entrepreneurial tracks. Tell us about the NASA Road Tour, if you don't mind. Hmm? Tell us about the Road Tour. How did that work? What was that The about? NASA Road Tour, um, what they did, and they still do, they brought together the education in which is now stem engagement and the small business commit the small business office and nasa's uh sbrs ttr program and we decided we wanted to get more minority businesses involved of course i wanted more in the uh, sbir or sttr program uh, uh, education wanted more in their program and so we created this entity to to go out to the universities set up a tour and invite as many of the minority universities within that region as possible and share with them the opportunities that were available to them as a minority university and to convince them that we as a nasa entity really do want to work with them we want them in our a pipeline and we want to offer them contracts or grants that was a hard sell it wow. took me at least four years wow. talking with deans talking with uh, professors and their students to convince them that we really do want to work with you here's the reason why it was a hard sell Many agencies have gone to these universities, the minority universities, and promised that they wanted to work with them. And there was never anything, there was never a follow-up or anything like that. No dollars, no anything. And so they became, you know, kind of cynical. Yes, 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 yes. That's what they, (laughs) yeah, you want to help me. Yeah, you want to, but we never seen a dollar. And so it took a while of me talking with them and convincing them that, yes, we're coming, we're here, we will have roundtable discussions with the deans and with the professors to say, what is it, how is it, uh, what is it we can do to actually convince you that we want to work with you and what types of technology are there that you have that can that we can use in our program. So we started having them to do what we call um, capability statements. Okay. And with those capability statements, we were trying to marry up uh, what they could do, uh, the capabilities that they have with the programs and projects that NASA had. Okay. And and finally, they started, we, we also invited some of our NASA prime contractors to that road show. So every road show, there are NASA prime contractors there. There are uh, probably there are HBCUs, uh, H, uh, Hispanic serving universities and uh, tribal colleges. They are also there. Okay. And many of the NASA uh, program directors are there as well to talk with them, the technical people, talking with the businesses and with um, the university to share with them what our capabilities are. These are the things we're looking for. And I want you to know what it is you can do to help me uh, fix the problem that I now have. And it became a little bit more successful because we started to finally get uh, some of those universities partnering with the small businesses to actually get contracts. And for the last four or five years, we started really seeing those numbers tick up. Nice, nice, nice. And it's all about numbers. When you, when you start uh, 
saying that you're going to do something new in a government agency. They want to see what the results are. What are the numbers? And so those numbers, when they saw those numbers tick up, especially NASA's numbers, all the other agencies started to join our NASA road tour to include Department of Defense. A lot of those started to join in with us. Uh, we had Department of Energy. NIH joined in with us. And so instead of just being a NASA road tour, which it still was called that, many of the other agencies started to attend those uh, road tours because they had the same goals that we had was to try to get more minority businesses. Mm. I felt a little bit more what we would call vindicated in that, <laughs> remember I said earlier on, they said they couldn't find in their environment. Right none of those interested but they started to see our numbers tick up mm. and finally they said yeah yeah there may be something to this <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow and so they started coming and hence sba started to also then do a uh, road tour after our road tour okay. as well and uh, SBA also started to come to the NASA road tour. Every road tour, there was somebody from SBA there as well. Wow. PTACs were there. Because another thing that the, the small businesses don't realize, there's so much free help out there with, with uh, SBA, with the PTACs, and those other agencies within their states. They're free help. <laughs> have to say it there, there are a lot of there's a lot of free help in right helping you write proposals helping you look at your budget and things like that and so we were providing them with those resources showing them where to find them connecting them with those resources nice 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 wow well congratulations on that effort that you did oh it was it was a, a really a labor of love because sometimes you you, you do wonder do you not understand that I'm really offering you uh, <laughs> more than just talk? I'm actually offering you funding to, you know, sustain your programs. One of the things that we said early on, because the universities often go after grants. Yes. Often grants kind of start fizzling out after a while, and especially with NASA, they start spending more of their money on contracts. And so if you start looking more at those contracting type mechanisms, you can usually help use this as a uh, thing to sustain your program. And in addition, give your students a little more um, exposure to these larger businesses and to the NASA program. So it was a win-win from where we saw it is you can learn how to do this when you have your uh, students come up through this program as an entrepreneur and understanding this some of them might get out there and actually decide that i want to do this for myself and start a small business i want to market my technology i know i've got a winner here i want to be able to see what i can do with it no definitely uh, i agree 100 percent. in fact uh, pierce and i we like i said earlier in the call we did a video about introducing new technology and invention ideas to the government. And uh, we talked about SBR and STTR. So this uh, comes right on time, this conversation that we're having with you. Uh, I mean, we, I think we did that a few weeks ago. And the response rate has been phenomenal. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I still connect. I'm still connected with, although I am retired, I'm still somewhat connected with the program. Okay. And I talk with them probably once or twice a month. Wow. Okay. And kind of go out and talk a little bit on occasion to universities about the opportunities and how you can get involved and how you can use this as a, another way of sustaining your program. Because as you well know, a lot of the minority uh, universities, the budgets keep shrinking every year. Yes. Right. But if you really want to compete you can't uh, you know don't go out there don't worry about trying to beg for this go out there and let's compete for some of these dollars that are out there they are out there and these agencies really do want to work with you so if you'll get out there and compete for it i says you guys know how to do this you write these proposals for grants and you get 10 million dollar grant five million dollar grants i mean 
it's not that different from writing a proposal for a contract. <laughs> right, right. No, 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 right. No, I agree. You know how to do this. And this is my encouragement to them. You know how to do this. You taught me <laughs> how to do this. I got my start here. And often they would complain in saying that, you know, they don't all give us as much money as they give the other universities. Well, here's the reality. We've always done more with less. Yes. That's just a fact of the matter. Yes, yes. And so from the little that we've had, we've created great things. And so I think let's not worry about what we don't have. Let's use this, these little things that we do have and let's grow it. That's what we've done in the past when we didn't have anything but morsels. <laughs> and we made big industries out of those little things. Wow. And so let's think about, hey, how did, we get, how did we get where we are now? We didn't have a whole lot then. And look what we've built. And we can build even greater because we know how to stretch. <laughs> <laughs> we've always known how to stretch. Now, that doesn't say let's not compete for these larger countries, but you got to start somewhere. And the thing that holds you back more often than not is worrying about what you don't have. Do, do you think that this is a great uh, launching pad to go after larger contracts? Absolutely. Okay. This is, and I often, you might have even seen it in that presentation, either in that one or in the subsequent presentations. This is the entry. This is the door to those other things. This is your, we often, if you will go to SBA's website, you'll see it as a, uh, they have Seed America Seed Fund. SBR and STTR, they use as a seed fun for you to start your business. They want to see you become successful and thus offer all these different products out there to help you become successful. Uh, in this phase one, this phase two, this post phase two, or you call bridge funding, this post phase two type funding that the, gov that the government offers out there to get you to a commercialized product. This is their way of trying to get you to uh, commercialization, trying to get your product out there. If they weren't really that concerned, they would not be providing this post phase two. They would take the phase two, this prototype that you gave them and just move on with it. But they actually want to see this thing successful, this technology that you're creating. Because who knows whether this going to be the next best thing that we have from the small it, uh, on mars we have more than eight of those uh, small businesses have technologies on one on those rovers wow eight of them wow, wow. <laughs> so it, it, uh, the economy is fueled by small businesses it's just that we doesn't we don't really know it as a minority community that and we have the technology we have the expertise we just don't know what's available. And sometimes the fear of failure stops most people from succeeding, unfortunately. Right. Or even trying. For that or matter. even trying. Absolutely. Even trying for that matter. And so that's why I'm always out there trying to encourage uh, entrepreneurs, small business, universities, because in the universities, I, sh I go back there to the bedrock of it, is where a lot of the entrepreneurs, a lot of the technologies will come. They come from a lot of these minority universities. I came from a minority university and ended up heading the top SBI, one of the top programs in the area in technology. Alabama A&M. Alabama A&M. <laughs> <laughs> And so when I'm talking to them, I'm talking to them from experience uh, that, look, I, I'm one of you. I came from there and I, I'm, I'm coming back to say here is an opportunity. It's not a joke. It's not that we're not really playing about it. It's, we're, we're not just giving lip service. We're actually putting money behind it. And many of those schools who came to the Roadshow, the NASA Roadshow, I'm going back to that because 
I said early on that we had a lot of the prime contractors there. Every show, every road show, there was a prime contractor and sometimes two of them at least signed a contract with one of the universities. Nice. Through the mentor protege program. Nice. Every road show. How often do you do the road shows? They do it. They do three a year. Okay. They do a road show three a year and it is on uh, their, their website. So, uh, whenever they're coming to a place near you, it's usually on the website. They publish it through SBA as well. Okay. SBA will publish it as well. Okay. Someone, someone that's attending the roadshow, which do they bring to the roadshow? Let me say, if you come into the roadshow, it depends on what you want to get from the roadshow. Do you want to talk to some of the technologists, some of the program managers, which I think you should. Uh, Let's say I have an idea that I've been working on for a technology. What should I bring to the roadshow? If you're coming to a roadshow, it's mostly informational, and um, you should bring uh, information about your technology, sure. But you should also do your homework, find out what it is, uh, which particular, uh, if I'm talking about NASA, okay, which particular division within NASA is working on that particular type of technology and find out who specifically. And, and it's, it, most of the stuff's on the website, I have to tell you. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, if you really spend a little time looking, you can find out what particular division in NASA uh, is working on aeronautics, uh, working on uh, sunning, sunning stuff, or working on Mars, Propulsion. It's all there, but you should bring information about your company, what it is you're trying to do, but you should also be able to tell them what it's going to do for them. I think I said that at the beginning, telling them how great your technology is, they'll just kind of look at you and say, okay, that's wonderful, but how can it help me with A, B, and C? That's the, that's the key. And if if and the only way to find out how it's going to help them with A, B, and C is to do some homework. Go to the website and call. You can with NASA. You can go to our SBIR website. It it has every uh, what we call uh, Tim's or what we call. We have our technical persons there. Technical infusion manager. That, that's what yes, that's what they used to be called. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The names changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, t uh, technical infusion managers. If you will call one of those guys, I promise you these guys are there and they're very close to the technology and they're very close to the mission directorates and they can tell you exactly who's doing this and who in that mission directorate is doing it and they can get an audience with them for you mm. and that's most important when you do that and you come to this role show you've got enough information to now talk to me at SBIR and said I talked with yada yada i know this particular technology that they're working on and you can start asking me how can i more successfully uh, apply to this and what should i do that's what you want to be asking us when you come to talk to an sbr person when you come to the road show you're going to be able to say i i saw all of this then you ask your question, how can I get involved? How can I get a contract or, you know, all of that. Right. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. I have uh, some technical questions here. Uh, some more specifically. Th thank you for the highlight, by the way. That was great mm -hmm. that we want to go in through uh, that uh, were submitted by uh, some of the people listening. Uh, number one, can a company subcontract an SBRR and what percentage are they allowed to subcontract? For example, Absolutely. phase one. Absolutely, they can subcontract uh, a SBR or phase one. Um, I forget the number. Is it 33%? It's okay. Something around that? It's about, 
it depends on whether you're talking about an SBIR or an STTR. Okay. All right. For <laughs> SBIRs. About, SBIR, I think, is about 30, 30% of okay. it. Yeah, you can subcontract. Uh, yeah, because 40%. 30% that other 30% is available for a subcontract. So yes. <laughs> okay. 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 And what's the importance of a principal investigator on an SBR and what determines a strong principal investigator? The, the principal investigator, the PI is the person that actually is going to be talking directly with the technical person at NASA, right? Okay. He's the person from with whom we're going to talk to understand uh, everything about the technologies that you are creating. Anything about this, if you're going to manage this thing and manage, run it to, to uh, success, you got to have a, a PI who actually knows his product, who actually knows the market that he's going into and knows that the budget that he has put together, and that's going to be important too, the budget that he put together is reasonable. That the timeline that he put out there is reasonable. Because we're going to be looking at that as well. <laughs> mm. and, and when we look at this, you say it's, it's going to take me only a month to create a prototype when you haven't even started. We're going to say that makes no sense. <laughs> right. And you're going to give me a budget that's way outside of the line of what the, what right. the other budget that we have for any technology. Now, we've been doing this a while, understand. Right, so, right, right. So these guys know what they're doing when they look at this stuff and says, no, that doesn't make sense. And you, you end up losing points for mm. just kind of not doing your homework and uh, giving me a technology that you think it's going to uh, revolutionize the world. And then I've got another technology over there uh, that's doing the same thing. And it shows me, cause we're going, we can Google too <laughs> <laughs> and often do. And, uh, and then we have all these databases that we look through and say, we just funded this technology last year or three years ago. Why do you think we need to fund it again? And what's different? And we often ask that question. What's different from this technology than the one we funded three years ago? But as a PI, you should go through all of those uh, technologies or similar technologies. And they're on NASA's website from all the way back to 1991, I believe. 92 we have they have the technologies that they funded all the way up until now and if if you're a good pi you look at that <laughs> you have somebody look at it and right. say, here's what they funded and here's where the holes are here's where the gaps and here's where i think i can make a difference and explore that gap mm. that's a good pi being able to do your homework and find a gap and explore the gap. Right, right. If you can't do that, then it's, it's unlikely that you are going to be that successful. Now, I must say that the NASA and a lot of the other agencies, they look for first-time proposers. And about 13 to 15% of first-time proposers do get awards. And that's a pretty good number, first-time proposers. So uh, you have to understand that when you put it in there, you are likely going to get an award in, in SBR, maybe 13, maybe 15. This is the first time ever doing it, they got an award. But others that put in, they're repeat, and usually about 40% of those. Okay, okay, okay. But a good PI would look at all of that stuff that information <laughs> i'm just saying right no 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 no. Hey, no look at all that he's a program he's a program manager he's a project manager right and so he's got to know all of these things and he should be managing all of this right absolutely absolutely in fact that uh i'm looking at a chart that you have understanding nasa's needs it says know your customer mm -hmm. review last year's solicitation and review the titles and some abstracts of the winning proposals in your area of interest. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And often they don't do it. Right. They just put it in and I don't want you to waste your time. But when I say that, let me qualify that. When I say I don't want you to waste your time, if you didn't do your homework, it's unlikely that you will be successful. Sometimes you slide through. And, and because, when I say slide through, you have a really good proposal. You have a really good technology that we really want to look at. And um, it, it, it comes through. But by and large, it's better to do your homework. <laughs> and if you've done that homework, if you've done it, you know exactly what NASA needs. Mm. And you can talk that language and say, I have gone through this. I, even before I solicit any solicitation come out, you, you would have already talked with the technical manager. You would already have talked with your temp infusion manager and most likely the directorate under which that technology is worked. So when it, that solicitation come out, you have all the information you need to put in there because you're going to ask all those pertinent questions. Well, what if I, if I did A, B, and C, would that be of interest to you? If I did D and F, is that? And then they're going to tell you, no, nope, not interested in that, but I am interested in this. That is, that is crucial. Gotcha. But they don't know they can actually talk to these guys. And that's how I was going to ask. That was my next question. How do people know that they could talk to them? We've been trying to tell them for years that you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say something. And listen, I have, for example, so you're today, you're obviously, you're on my podcast, but trying to get any government agency to come on my show, it's been impossible, right? And mm -hmm. so I can tell you, even though they say they've been trying, like trying to get them on, because these are new mediums, right? YouTube mm -hmm. is a new medium, podcasting is, are new mediums. And a lot of times, kind of what you said at the beginning, they don't understand these mediums are reaching far more people than, like, say, a NASA broadcast. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, I looked at your presentation from 2014, uh, which is on YouTube. It's unlisted, but it has only 38 views. Mm -hmm. When we do a presentation from two days ago, it has 600 views. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it's been difficult trying to convince some of these agencies to come on and have this conversation. Well, like, again, you're now you're retired, so you can do whatever you like. But uh, as an employee of NASA, um, it would have been a much more difficult task to get you on to have these same conversations. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> I have to say, in this particular program, especially NASA's program, we work hard. <laughs> I have to say, we're probably some of the harder working people that you've seen. Right. When, from the time we go in until the time we leave, we are working. You're working. We are working. I mean, right. really putting in the time. Right. Trying to get these things out. And a solicitation, trying to get that work done, my God, it, it's... It's, it's quite a task because all of this work NASA does with SBR is done in-house. Oh, wow. All the reviews are done in-house. All of the uh, selections are done in-house. All of the uh, awards are done in-house. From start to finish, everything is a one-stop thing, one-stop program in NASA with SBR. It's all done in-house. All the technical reviews, everything. Okay. No, well. Uh, and so we have to corral, we have to manage all of that. <laughs> no, no, no. I can, and, and, and again, I understand. Um, but and again, we could talk about this online. But uh, yeah, I can tell you that's what I've experienced uh, trying to reach out to agencies to get them to have conversations, even about new products they're introducing, changes to government websites, changes to programs, things like that, where again, it's just sharing information with a broader audience. Mm -hmm. uh, we've reached out, and um, I can tell you it's been really challenging. I've actually shared uh, information. I've shared this particular podcast with a few of my uh, colleagues from NASA that this was going to happen. Okay. And so they are considering doing podcasts. Okay. So it's likely uh, I can talk with them more and okay. how it went, but share that this is a, this is a particular medium that you could use. Right. I was uh, encouraged yesterday when talking with a colleague that they considered 
they had been considering doing a podcast. Nice, nice. On NASA's SBR program. So that I mean, the the media, the the social media is right. Know, is another medium that you can use. And of course, we've been doing what we've done, and we and we've gone out to different places, but we can't reach everybody. Right. No, absolutely. We not. can only reach those who come to these events. And uh, we do make it available online. Right. No, no, no. no. Come, but you're correct. <laughs> These <laughs> types of uh, mediums are, a media are probably much more accessible to other. Uh, Certainly. Audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. A couple more technical questions. Mm -hmm. um, what about foreign subcontractors on SBRs? How uh, um, do they have to be located in the United States? It is in the United States. Okay, so you have to be located in the United States, but you can uh, a foreign person can own it or no? Um, typically, this uh, program it is as is a United States program, and you have to your company has to be based in the United States. Okay, okay, and it is not. To be for it shouldn't be a foreign owned entity they actually do check <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm asking <laughs> they actually do check and uh, and and disqualify some companies because they have even though they have a base here they actually are owned by a foreign entity right and some and they often will say that you are not eligible okay and okay. and that information is for those who don't who don't mind going to look at the website. That is, <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> it really is all of that information. No, I'm sure is there. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's there. I, I I I'm I'm sure. And that's but again, that's why I asked because I, it, it might be easier for someone to listen to this driving their car, and uh and these are common questions right that people would ask. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Now, what is the difference between agencies when submitting SBRs? Do you, or do you even know that? What is the difference between agencies? Yeah, is there a different process for submitting SBRs between the different agencies? Well, they all have the same. Um, we all have the same structure. Let's say it that way. Okay. Um, they they have different ways of uh, doing it. For instance, the DOD, they are an acquisition program. So they are looking for technologies that can go, they're looking to buy technologies that can improve their warfighter or uh, whatever uh, ship that they have. Okay. Or, so those, this is technology they're going to buy. NASA, on the other hand, don't really specifically buy a tech, we're not an acquisition program, we're a research program more or less. And we're looking for something to help advance our research uh, cause and exploration. Okay. And so uh, the difference is some of the, you're going to submit the same way. Uh, it, it, there's going to be a solicitation and they're going to put out what they're looking for. And you respond to that solicitation. The difference is some of them offer under phase two, some offer maybe uh, a little bit more for phase one than under than other agencies. For instance, NASA on a phase one feasibility study or concept study, they only uh, uh, offer a 125k for a concept study, and they give you a year to do that concept study. Under a DOD, one of the DOD agencies. They're going to say, I want a six month concept study, but typically they may even go up to 225K gotcha. for this concept study. Um, but you still have to apply through, NASA does it one stop. Uh, DOD, maybe the Navy, you may have to go through uh, a contracting agency or you know, that they've hired or a different agency. So theirs may not be all one stop. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, uh, but it is, like I said, it's, it's, it's still the same type of thing. Uh, the wards are the same uh, process. You know, you still go through, you still got, got 24 months for a phase two to fix, to finish it. 
and you still have maybe six months or a year for a phase one to finish it. How you actually go, and, and like I said, it's still, I, if you go to sbir.gov, that specific information to each specific agency as to what the nuances are, it is very much cleared right there. Okay. what the nuances are and i'm actually on it now the sbr.gov and has every agency who offers the uh, the sbr program department of agriculture nist national institute of science uh, technology and standards uh, defense education energy health and human so services all of those and you just kind of click on and you'll see just a nuance it's only a nuance. It's not that big of a difference. Right, right, right. And, uh, so that's why I use that word nuance. <laughs> <laughs> I like that word, nuance. Mm -hmm. uh, what, in your experience, what makes up a solid team? What makes a good PI, I have to say that. <laughs> okay, okay, good PI. A good PI is a good solid team, a good budget person. You've got to understand your finances, you know, what you're doing with your budget. And um, most likely a good scale a person who works at schedule. And if you can, I don't think you can do it all yourself. <laughs> no. And because uh, somebody's got to be able to follow these milestones and make sure that they are on on track. And then <clears throat> your your business person, your marketing business strategist. And if you don't have a lawyer, you may not. You probably want a intellectual property person, but you don't have to have it right away. But as things start to move along, you probably want to get you an intellectual property person. Okay. How does it work? If I receive a phase one from one agency and a phase two from another agency? You can receive a phase two and a phase, you can, let me say this, you can get they are transferable if the agency receiving the phase two uh, decides that they are not going to award the phase two, then they can uh, they can uh, release that phase two over to NASA, or vice versa. We've done it a few times, quite a few. Okay. Yeah. If if on a phase one, I looked at that concept study as a NASA person and says, okay, that's nice, but that's not exactly what I want, so I'm not going to fund it for a phase two. But the uh, Department of Navy saw it, and it perfectly works for what they're trying to do. They'll call NASA up and say, hey, I saw this phase one that you guys funded, and I want to know if you guys are planning to do anything with it or offer a phase two. And if so, then we would have to release it. We will release it onto them. Same way with the phase two, because company because the, the agencies are now offering what we call sequential or post phase two. If we funded NASA funded a phase two and got the prototype and decided that that's as far as they want to take this, the next and not offer pace pace post phase two funding, uh, Department of Energy might look at this technology and say, I saw that you funded this phase two. I like it. And I think it would answer some of the questions that we have. Are you planning to offer a, a, a sequential or a post phase two award for this? And we'll possibly, we may say no, and then that releases us from it and we can't offer it. After we said no, we give it to uh, the next agency and then they will fund it. So yes, they are transferable. I know that was a long answer, but yes, it's transferable. Okay, okay. Uh, how do disputes work when it comes to the SBR process? Disputes. Uh, if you have a dispute, depends on the type of the dispute you're talking. From that type of dispute, typically NASA, um, and all my experience is with NASA, but they, they offer similar in other programs. With NASA, if you uh, have a question concerning uh, your proposal submitted, you can actually ask for a, I can't think of the term, but 
you can talk with them and ask them for a, hmm, oh my Lord, I can't think of the term. But you can talk with them about it and it's uh, ask them what happened with your proposal, why weren't you selected? There's, okay. a, there's a term we have and I just can't think of it at the moment. Uh, some sort of, is it like a briefing? Yeah, it's a debrief. Yeah, there you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Been okay. out of it for a little bit. But That's okay. You can uh, you can ask for a debrief. In fact, in NASA, I think on the phase one, I think a phase one there's an automatic uh, sort of a debrief where we will uh, share with you what some of the uh, uh, evaluators said. And uh, if you want to talk further with that, then you have to request it within a certain time period. That time period is also online and in the contract uh, when you actually did the proposal. But as long as you do it within that time period, you can actually call and ask or write and ask for more information. Because they really want to help you uh, do a better job next time. And so they'll give you suggestions of what you might do next time to make this uh, proposal more attractive or maybe accepted the next time. And if you still don't agree, then you can do uh, another dispute and say, I don't know why you would, but. <laughs> right, right. But you could because really they do want to help you get this award. And if you, you know, think that you were wrongfully uh, evaluated, then say so, and they will tell you why they thought this. And most of the information is very, very, very useful. I was a part of that process, actually, in writing up those questions and those responses. And so if you're concerned about it and why you didn't, or more or less, which I think is the, the, the part of the question that you're really getting at, how do I get more information to make this thing better? Yes. And what you do is take that debriefing information and then ask a few more questions. They'll answer them. They'll be happy to answer them. But do it within that time frame because that's the time that they have. And then they're off to the next. Next, right. You know. Set of goals, to, plans, activities. Exactly. But they are happy to do it. A lot of them are happy to share with you if you don't see it under your, you know, phase one debriefing in that reply to you of what happened with your proposal and why it was selected in the comments sections and so forth. If you want more, ask. They'll give it to you. A few, a few more questions and then we're going to wrap up. Uh, how does the auditing process work and how often are you audited during the process? Auditing. We are audited same we <laughs> right is audited uh, by national they, they also are, are audited by national academies they look at the program to see what we've done and if we are abiding by the rules that are uh, set out in the SBIR guidelines also we're audited by GSA <laughs> hmm. uh, government accounting okay. as well and um, given they look at our past, past performance and the proposals and awards that we've made, and they go through it and say, we have a concern or question about this, or we think this is good, maybe you should change that. But that's probably once, well, since the last couple of years, I think probably every, Probably twice a year, I think we had some GSA auditing come okay. through. It okay. may have been three times, but the last couple of years, but that's mandated. That's actually mandated through the government that the GSA audit all of those programs to what see about, if they are complying with the rules. Does that, how does that affect the contractors that are working on the programs? Uh, that's, 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 inter that's internal. Okay, okay. They're auditing our internal processes, but, okay. and that's much more to uh, okay. gotcha. a clear statement. They're auditing internal processes. Okay, they, so, so not necessarily the small businesses that are winning the actual SBIRs. Now, that's another thing. They do do spot checks of these businesses. 
the IG in, in the uh, uh, the IG often in in NASA's SBIR program, they have uh, access to our database, and they are in there daily mm. to make sure that there is no fraud, waste, or abuse of those awards that we're making. There have been, and I have to say and caution, there have been some companies who have been uh, brought to court and fined or faced jail time just mm. recently for fraud. Sure, sure, fraud, no. And just one in Florida, it was all over the news, CNN covered it. Right down in Florida, a professor had frauded uh, the NASA SBIR program, and he bought cars and, and used the money for personal reasons rather than the research. And it's it's public information, so I can mention it. So <laughs> no, great, no, that's no, that's good to know. And I and I and again, I want to share everything right from A to Z with the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't. The, the, the guidelines are very clear of what you can spend the money on. And so if you follow the guidelines, you have nothing, absolutely nothing to worry about. Right. Right. Uh, and if you did it by, you spend it on something that by mistake, they, the IG is looking at that and they understand that and they just, they talk with you about it and find out what happened. And if it was an honest mistake, it was an honest mistake and they just go on. Right. And they said, don't do that. That's You can't do that. But in the case where you're doing something deliberate. When it's overt, deliver, right. deliberate, then they're, they're going to prosecute you. You're going to court, and they're going to call us <laughs> as a fact witness. Nice. Okay. And that has happened more than six, seven times over the last 10 years. And we're dealing with people, so you could, as you can imagine, that you know, you, if you do hundreds of these things a year, um, some 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 people are going to abuse the system. Some people will abuse it, but they are looking at you. They are looking at it very closely. I said uh, they are in our in NASA's database every day. They are skimming the database to see if there's duplicate stuff. If you, we 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 try not to do this, but. If you got, if you propose an award uh, uh, to NASA, and the same thing you propose to DOD or to Department of Agriculture, you can propose it to all of them, but you can only accept one of those awards. Okay. Okay. I understand that, and that's little known fact. Even though you propose, you can propose it to every agency out there. Right. But you can only accept one of them. Mm. For the exact same thing. Right. No, right. Makes, no, thank you. No, thank you for clarifying that. I never even, that wasn't even a question that I had, thinking that you could propose the same thing to multiple agencies. You can. You just can't accept more than you one can, award. You cannot accept more than one award for the exact same thing. Those are the things that the auditors, the IG looks at. And, uh, and they say, this is duplicative. This is a duplicate award. Why did you uh, accept an award from NASA and Department of Energy for the same thing? Sometimes it's not quite the same thing. It just looks like it from the face of it. And then they're going to call me as a fact witness, and they're going to call the Department of uh, uh, Energy, and we're going to testify and say, here's the application. These are totally different applications. It may be somewhat similar technology, but the applications are quite different. And with that information, then they said, okay, I understand that makes sense. But so that's something that you might run into when dealing with uh, submitting uh, multiple proposals to different agencies. Uh, how often do SBRs phase twos make it to phase three? Uh, that, or phase two and a half? How, how does that? Uh, phase, oh, post phase twos, right. uh, you, you, there are a lot of different types of uh, post phase two initiatives. Um, a lot of them go on to, I don't have the numbers in front of me at this time, but quite a few of them make it over to a, a post phase two, like uh, phase two E in, in NASA's case. 
and they go to a phase that may be about 30%. Okay, wow. Maybe about 30%. That's significant. Um, I don't have, and then I don't quote me exactly on them. No, 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 no. It's that's about okay. 30%. Right, wow. Yeah, I, I, I used to have those numbers on top of my head when I was out there <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> but, but hey, now you're about, what, eight months removed from the position. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time, I, people dump some of the information <laughs> or the information gets a little cold. <laughs> Uh, so let me ask you this. Uh, what would you like to see happen next with the program? Just high level kind of question. What would I like to see? Yeah. What would you like, where would you like to see this program? Um, how would you like to see it? Uh, you know, obviously you've helped uh, with the road show. What, what other things would you like to see with the overall program? Uh, well, actually I love to see them continue the efforts. And I think they are because I've been getting calls about it to help different small businesses minority small businesses and universities participate. I'd like to see them increase that by a factor. Okay. Uh, those minority businesses, because I think that's where a lot of the future technologies are. And I like to see them spend a little bit more time in the social media area because uh, there is no way to reach some of the people that they need to reach or the men as many of the people they need to reach. We do, they do a lot of um, road shows or conferences or workshops, but you can only get 300, 400 people in a room. Right. So things like this, I think could help get it out to more, more people who can't afford to travel. Let's just say it that way. They, they can't afford to travel to all of the, those places so you can do more i like to see more social media but i still would love to see them do more with minority businesses than they have done to date they're building but they're not there yet <laughs> and if you you know given the chance um to speak to minority businesses what is something that you would tell them and we'll use that as our parting words today for no minority businesses they are out there looking for you. They honestly are looking for you. It's not really lip service. They want to work with you. NASA wants to work with you. Department of Defense wants. They set up all kinds of programs trying to find you. And when they put out these RFPs, requests for proposals or RFIs, requests for information, please, 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 just respond. They're not asking you always for a proposal, just re request for information. Let them know that you're interested or you have something that they might uh, be able to use. And if you respond to those things, they will contact you. They know they have you in their database and when they are looking and come from their program and say, I need more minorities in in aeronautics, I need more not minorities in uh, propulsion. I need more in manufacturing. They can go back to this database and say, I have company X, Y, and Z who can do this. In your Office of Small Business Programs, they, they monitor this all the time. And they will actually contact you. That's their small business specialists, that's their job. They actually look out trying to find you as well and say they try to match you up with technology or match you up with not just technology. They try to match you up with other opportunities like uh, facilities, like security, uh, all of those computer purchases and so forth as subcontractors or contractors to some of their new contracts coming out. They're looking for you. And if you will respond, that's one of the asks from the small business programs, please have them to respond. We can't get to you if you don't respond and we don't know you're out. Let them know you're out there. That's what I would say. Dr. Joseph Grant, thank you so much for coming on today. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure. Thank you, sir. For all those persons concerned or interested in working with NASA, make sure to check out our show notes page for information and insight. If you or someone you know who has an interest in doing an SBIR, STTR, 
or you'd like to seek more information out, please feel free to send me an email as we are connecting with partners who can help provide resources to facilitate that process. As always, the show notes, book recommendations, and lessons from today's episode will be over at our website, govcongiants.com forward slash podcast. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in today.